it's quite clear that we are uh, c- can, in some cases, capture patients at this very early stage and can try and enrich, as it were, um, uh, cohorts with a very high risk profile based on, say, their uh, EVV uh, status or antibody status, based on their uh, genetic uh, disposition. Um, do they have a sibling or um, parent or, or else a genetic relative um, who has MS? Um, what is their HLA subtyping? So the um, uh, human link, like I said, antigen um, uh, profile. All of these are uh, elements of um, uh, risk modulation that can lead to essentially enriching uh, populations that would then be ready for potentially preventative trials. Okay, and I think this is uh, one of the questions that will potentially be um, discussed um, at, at one of the, I mean, the, the meetings that I'm co-chairing uh, next week um, in Swansea at the MS Frontiers meeting, when we're looking at risk factors and are we getting closer to preventing MS. Um, where there will be focus on um, these, these these questions, um, but clearly, I think one of the one of the holy grails, as it were, um, at the at the pushing the um, the diagnosis yet further into the pre-diagnostic phase, as it were. Um, um, there's obviously now a big discussion, most recently uh, rekindled uh, on through the um, uh, large cohort studies that have. Uh, again, brought up uh, Epstein-Barr virus as a major component of the risk profile in MS. And we'll see what, in the context of these other elements that I've discussed, um, uh, will sort of contribute. Because one of the uh, trajectories, obviously, of trying to prevent MS is vaccinating against EBV. Um, and, um, uh, but it, obviously, there's, there's many challenges associated with that. Um, but clearly, the interest of the drug companies who are doing or vaccine makers is is immense. And uh, Moderna, for example, one of the COVID vaccine uh, uh, manufacturers, has has a, a program on, on on this now, and various others.